Just imagine you created a report with a visual like this one over here, where we have the sales broken down by day, but then you get more and more data. And suddenly this breakdown by day doesn't look so good anymore and you change it to weeks. And then time goes by and you run into exactly the same problem and you have to change it again to a breakdown, maybe now by month. Now, is there a way to overcome this problem and turn this data access into a smart data access? Well, let's have a look. Welcome to How to Power BI. My name is Bas, and if this is the very first time for you visiting this channel, then make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on all of my videos and we just share everything I know about Power BI. Now, let's have a look how we can create a smart data access. Well, what do I exactly mean with that? Now, the period breakdown that you choose for a chart might look good when you develop the report, but then the time period might change, and that breakdown then might not look so good anymore. For example, over here, when I choose here a larger time period, let's say we choose the whole month, then this breakdown by day, hmm, it's not ideal. You probably want to switch then to weeks. And of course we can put the week number on the X axis and then go up over here and now it looks good again. But then the time period changes again. So let's say the end period changes to the end of April. So over here, the 30th of April and that breakdown by week, hmm, is not ideal anymore. So we have to go again to the visual, drill up, and now we show the breakdown by month. And then the period changes again, and we have to change to the quarter level or to the year level. Now what I wanna create is that Power BI automatically sees how long is that period that we are showing in the visual, and that automatically chooses the optimal period breakdown for the axis. All right, now as a starting point, let's go here to the X axis and remove everything. And the only thing that we keep is what we have here on the y-axis, so in this example, total sales. And then we are going to build a field parameter. So let's go here to the top, to modeling, and then here we can choose new parameter, and we're gonna go for a field parameter. And here we can set up the parameter, and let's call it outer period, and then we can choose here from our date table, first of all, the date, so I'm going to choose the date, then the week, then I want to have the month, the quarter as well, and then let's also add the year. Now, here we can add the slice to the page and click on create. Now, this creates a new table for that field parameter. And you can look at this table if you go to the data view and then choose here the outer period table. And you see we have one column with date, week, month, quarter, year. We have then here the outer period fields and we have the outer period order. All right, so it's a disconnected table. Now, if we then go back to the report, you see it also added a slicer. Let me put it right next to the visual. And then if we go to the chart, we can add the outer period column onto the X axis. So when nothing is selected in the slicer, then it shows the top level fields, which here is date. But if I click on the next one, week, then we see the week breakdown. If I click on the next one, we see the month breakdown, etc. So that works. However, I don't want to click. I want Power BI to automatically choose the optimal one. All right. Now, what is next? For this, we're going to need a table in between our day table and our field parameter table. So let's go here to the data modeling view. Now you see that the outer period table, that field parameter table is disconnected from everything else. However, we're going to change this. We're going to create a table in between the day table and the outer period table. All right, now if you're on the latest version of Power BI, you can create the new table from the modeling view. However, if you're in an older version, then you have to go either to the data view or to the report view, and from here, click on new table. Now let's call our table date to period bridge. So date to period bridge. And this is going to be equal to, well, here we're going to create a table with two columns. In the first column, we want to have all of the dates. And in the second column, that's going to be the special one. There, we're basically going to say, which period breakdown we want to have. Now to create that table, we're going to use the function add columns. Now, which needs as a first argument, a table. Now, a table that has one column with all of the dates, and we can create that with the calendar or calendar auto function. Okay, now I'm going for calendar auto here. Now, then we need to add a second column to that, which we can do over here first by defining the name of that column. So I'm going to call it period. 
and now the expression. Now here we need to come up with a logic to see how far we are from the first date in our data set. And I'm going to do that by counting the months from that very first date. So I'm gonna do this with an in variable. So let's say var and then month count. And then we can use the function date diff and here we need the first date, which is the first date in a data set, so min. And then we can say min dim date date or min date. And then as a second argument, we take then the date from the date column. And then we want to see how many months we are from that first date. So here for the third argument, I choose month. All right. Now, when we have variables, we need a return statement. So I'm going to type here return. And then we can make use of the switch function. So now we are at the point where we have to define which period breakdown we actually want to have dependent on that month count. So I can type in here true comma, go to the next line. And then here we can refer to the month count variable. And if this one is equal to zero, then I want to have the breakdown by the dates. So that was the very first row. And there we had the number zero. All right. So to make this a little bit clearer, let's maybe put in a comment and we can say here date breakdown. And then I go to the next line. So here, when the month count is lower than or equal to, and then here you can choose what breaking points you want to have, let's say three, then I want to have one, which would then be a breakdown by the weeks. All right. So let me just quickly finish this. And there you go, I finished the switch statement. Of course, you can choose where you want to have the breaking points. All right, good. So what are these numbers again? The zero, one, two, three, and four. Well, to make that point a little bit clearer, let's go here to our field parameter table. You see a zero corresponds with date, a one corresponds to week, a two corresponds with month, three with quarter, and four with year. Okay, and that is important because now that we have that bridge table, we can switch to the modeling view. Now you see there we have our dates to period bridge and I'm going to connect it to the date table by taking date and dragging it onto date. All right, so that is the first relationship. Now you see it's a one-to-one -one relationship that Power BI created. However, let's change this. So let's go to properties and over here we have them date. Here at the bottom we have the date to period bridge. Then I want to make the connection on the date fields and then cardinality I want to have one too many. And cross filter direction, let's go for single. Click OK. Perfect. That's relationship number one. Then relationship number two is from the dates to period bridge to the other period field parameter table. All right. Now here we are not going to take the date because we don't have a date field in outer period, but we're going to take that period column and we're going to drag it onto the outer period or the column, which was that column where we had zero, one, two, three, and four. Now here you see we have a one to many relationship where the many side is date to period bridge and the filter goes from outer period to, well, to a bridge table. But I want the filter to go the other direction. So I'm gonna go over here and put the cross filter direction to both. Now you're probably wondering how is this going to work? Now let's say we are going to create a slicer that uses the date field from them date. And we choose a period that goes from the 1st of January till the end of March. Now then those dates get filtered over here in dates to period bridge. So if we now look at the date to period bridge and then we scroll all the way down till the end of March, then the maximum value that we would have is a one. And if we change the period again to, let's say, the end of June, then the maximum number would be a two. So that maximum number tells us basically what period breakdown we then want to have. All right, now let's try this out. Let's now go to the report view. And I'm going to get rid of that slicer that we created here at the beginning. Let's remove it. Now let's select the visual and open the filter pane. And here I want to have a top end filter on that number column that we have in the field parameter table. Now, it is unfortunately at the moment not visible. So let's make it visible. I'm going to switch back to the modeling view. And then here I go to the outer period table. I want to make visible the outer period order where we have zero, one, two, three, and four. Then we go back to the report view and I'm going to take the outer period order and put it here 
as a filter. The filter that I want to have is a top end filter, and I want to show the top one. And then we also have to say by what value. Well, for that, we take that number column, out the period, order. But we don't want to have the count. We want to have over here the maximum. Apply the filter, and that's it. So let's see it in action. I'm going to slide all the way to the left. Okay, so now we have only 14 days selected, and you see we have a breakdown by dates. And now I'm going to change over here the ending date to the end of February. All right, and it automatically picks up now the week. And let's now change it again. I'm going to pick over here the end of June. All right, so now it should pick up the months. And there you go. So if I slide this all the way to the right, then you see, then we have the quarters. And if we would have more than one year of data, well, then the breakdown would switch to a breakdown by years. Now, as a finishing touch, it probably would also be nice if we then automatically change the title of our chart depending on what breakdown is chosen. So that says total sales by week, total sales by month or quarter. Now for that, we need a measure. So let's create a new one and let's call this one chart title. All right, so we can make use again of the switch function. And now you have to figure out, okay, on what do you want to base it? Now we can count the number of months like we did before, or we can just look at the maximum of the, well, auto, uh, auto period order column. All right, so let's select that one. And then we can say, if this one is equal to zero, then we want to return the title um, sales by uh, date or sales by day. Okay, and then we can just continue exactly like this one. All right, so let me finish this one. Let's copy it down, Alt Shift, and then arrow down to copy it down five times. And then here, I'm just going to change this to one, two, three, and then four. And then we can say here, sales by week, sales by month, sales by quarter. And then the last one is then sales by year. Okay. And that's it. So now we can use that then for conditional formatting of the chart title. So select the chart, go to formatting options, general, title, click here on FX. We want to have field value. And here we can then choose the chart title measure that we just wrote. Uh, hmm. I made a mistake in the formula. So let's click here and cancel. Let's go back to the chart title measure and let's see what we did wrong. I forgot over here a true statement at the beginning. Okay, now of course we could also write this a little bit cleaner uh, if we would say, okay, we're going to work with variables like we did before, and so month count, and then you just copy here this first part like this, then we can say we want to return huh, because we have there a variable, and then here this we can then replace, so control shift L to select all of them, and then we can say replace with month count is equal too. And that looks much cleaner. Okay, now let's try this again. I'm going to go back here to general title, conditional formatting. Now let's see if it works. Chart title, ta -da. click OK. Then change over here the time period. And now you see it nicely switches to sales by week. And if I go a little bit further, sales by month. Perfect. And this is how you can set up a smart date access for your visuals in Power BI using a bridge table between your field parameter table and your date table. Now, of course, one big breakdown is that, well, we start always counting from the first date in a data model. That means if we would have here a between slicer, that is not really going to work that well because, well, the auto date period that gets chosen, well, this is kind of hard coded in that bridge table that we created. All right, now, of course, there are different ways in which we could approach this. However, every solution that I came up with only worked when we refresh the data set, not when you have a slicer. All right, now, if you know a solution, then just let me know or share your thoughts in the comment section below. And if you wanna check out more videos like this one, then have a look at these videos over here. I wanna thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.